It's mad, isn't it? Like, we've waited so long for this. It's a nutcase amount of space, babe. That's mad. Yeah. Look, this is going to be the access to the engine. It's actually pretty sexy, but I'm biased. Is the 8th of August, the 23rd of November, 8th of December, 6th of Feb. What is it, the 20 something of April, the 13th of June? This is the main bulkhead for Seawind 1317. You can see now this has all been fitted. So you've got the lines run under there from the bath base. We have the deck being dry fitted into Ruby Rose 2. The solar panels are ready to be installed. The galley furniture is starting to go in. The hull is no longer blue. This week is the last week of construction. This is the last time I will be filming in this factory. This boat will be wet in a week. She's in the water, she's floating. She looks amazing. All right, Ready? should we go see that? Yeah, let's go see her. She's ginormous. Yep. I'm actually speechless. This is ginormous. Good morning, it is us. We're in Pattaya. Therese, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today is handover day. We have literally been waiting for this for a solid year, at least. And I can't believe that River Rose 2 is literally 200 metres that way. I haven't set foot on this boat for over a year. So Nick has obviously been there throughout the entire build. I have not been there for over a year. So I'm super excited. It feels like a dream. I've been waiting for this for so long. I can't wait to see her. Shall we go? Let's go. Okay. Enjoy this one. Hello. <laughs> Very exciting times. I even had a shave for today. I know. How are you feeling? Pretty sanguine, actually. Yeah, you are. You're surprisingly sanguine. Almost uncharacteristically sanguine. It is, okay. is a legalisation of marijuana. I don't have to do with that. <laughs> Indeed. Well, people in on the last few weeks because the last time um, everyone saw Ruby Rose 2 was when she was launched into the you know Saigon River. So, what's been happening in the last few weeks? Oh, well, I guess I well, I tidied my life up, packed everything up, went on a mad farewell bender, and then <laughs> left to meet you in Bangkok. What about the boat, babe? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is why you're in charge. Welcome to a new narrative where you actually get the story. She set sail eight days ago, left uh, Ho Chi Minh City for the six day trip arrived on Thursday, one day early. Mm. They have spent two or three days preparing it for our, our arrival. I shaved, almost found a clean pair of underpants. Explain to people what you mean by almost clean. I had to wash them in the swimming pool yesterday. <laughs> I'm very excited, obviously, to see the boat. Um, can't believe that I'm about to step on board my own 45 foot catamaran. I see her. <laughs> Are you sure that's our boat? Uh, there's only one in the world that's in the water. Oh my god. Alright. Okay. Should we go see that? Yeah, let's go see her. Are you sure we can handle this boat? I don't think you can handle the truth. I don't know if I can handle this boat. Remember when we got Ruby Rose and we're like, wow, what a crazy big boat compared to what we had? Yeah, it's gonna take some time to adjust to this one. Okay. Oh She's ginormous. Yep. She's way bigger than I was expecting. Okay, Therese, I guess this is it. Okay. One hand for the boat before you step over. Yeah, it's hey. been a while since I've actually It's been a while. Right. There you go. <sighs> wow. I'm actually speechless. This is ginormous. This is way bigger than it looks like. On camera. This isn't actually the main helm, is it? No. Main. Port helm is main. But they both have throttles. This is huge. This is huge. Metaphorically or physically? In every single way. I'm, I'm absolutely speechless. It's beautiful. But it's really beautiful. Three years of work, love. Yeah. Phil's just arrived, so the handover is imminent. Phil Harper, the man, the legend. Does Seawind put a toolkit on this boat? There's a small toolkit. Yeah, we need to go to a hardware store and get some stuff. We need to get lots of stuff. We need to get lots of stuff. He's still giving you a key, really. Oh, all good. That's all right. Good. All right. There you go. Okay. You guys want to just have a walk around? Yeah, let's have a walk okay. around. <laughs> just okay. go for it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, I mean, babe, this is the first time you've seen her, like, in all her glory as well, isn't it? Undressed. Un undressed, that's right. Undressed. Well. And you know, this is one of the big differences between being on a catamaran versus being on a monohull, is that when you're in your, like, living space on a catamaran, you 
are so well connected with, you know, the outside world. I'm just surrounded by these panoramic windows and, you know, I just stand here and I can see everything around me and that is, oh, that is just huge. nice. It's huge. That is, um, yeah, really important for, for me. I'm going to go down and have a look at our master. That's a very big television. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm 5'2". And I don't know how high I can reach. I think it's six three, six four headroom on this car. <laughs> wow, oh look, the lights are on, babe. Yeah. That just is quite comfortable. The air conditioning is on. God, that feels good. We got charging. One on each yeah. side, so we don't have a rail. <laughs> <laughs> What does it look like? I don't know. Well, obviously, cushions for somewhere. For day bed. Oh. Here you go. Uh, somewhere to hang all your ball gowns. Yes. Does that light just come on when you open the door? I don't know. Why is it? How do we know? I don't know. We'll never know if the light goes off. <laughs> this is lovely. Yeah, but Kevin picked a really nice piece of wood for this. Yeah. Yes. Shower. Heads. Heads. Speaking floor. <laughs> yeah, that we need to get something like that. Alright, let's go and check out the um, guest hall, I guess. I mean, look at these freezers. It's ridiculous. So this is all of our stuff. Alright. Yeah, we'll come back to here. This is it's gonna be like Christmas on that one. Guest heads. It's a very lovely washing machine. This is what I um was interested in. I think that's really a really nice touch. Oh wow, brilliant. Little Easter egg from James and yeah. Kevin. Wow, okay, this is a lovely guest room. Wow, this is um, a very big bed. Well, I told you. Is it, it's not quite as wide as ours. But it's a lot longer. It's going to sleep here. You and your naughty. The gimp. This is a really cute little um, bird. I don't know whether we'll ever use it as a bed, but... And this is your workshop. We'll look at that in detail yeah. another time. Hi everyone, just wanted to interrupt this episode really quickly to remind you of two things. First of all, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot and we have some absolutely cracking episodes coming up for you, including our time with Nikki and Jason from Gone With The Winds. We had so much fun with them, but there was also some ups and downs and I'm not gonna say anything more. You're gonna have to watch the episodes to find out what I mean. Second of all, I just wanted to quickly remind you all that we are on Patreon. We have an absolutely amazing community of patrons, incredible humans from all around the world, and they get some awesome perks and benefits as well. One of which is meetups. So we are hosting two meetups this year, just for our patrons. We have a world premiere of Ruby Rose 2 in Pattaya in Thailand in September and all of our patrons are invited. They can come on board, walk through the boat. We're gonna go out sailing with them. It's gonna be super fun. For those of you who can't make it to Thailand, which let's face it is probably most of you, we are going to be in Annapolis this year. Unfortunately, River Rose 2 won't be there, but Nick and I will. And we are doing a patron meetup there as well, where we can chat, where we can do a Q and A, where we can get to know you all. And so we're really looking forward to that. So that's just for patrons, but they have loads of other perks as well, such as our Discord server. We do live Q and A's and live streams. We have a WhatsApp group where they can chat and get to know each other. We've had patrons meet each other on the WhatsApp group and go on holiday together. So very, very cool bunch of people. We also have crewing opportunities available for our patrons coming up in the future. We've already had our first patrons come out and crew for us, and that was Nikki and Jason. So if that interests you, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. It will take you straight to Patreon. You can read all about it, see all the hurt, see all the tears, and hopefully we'll see you over there. Okay, let's get back to the episode. So I think what's going to happen now is that Phil is going to come over and we are going to do handover. So awesome. that's going to be a very big day. Let us start the, let's start the learning. And there's like six pages of things that I need to check off. Right. Uh, 
it's really just showing where this is, where that is. Yeah. Some of these things Nick may need to show me where it is. <laughs> fresh water. We're starting with fresh water. The fresh water pump. Okay. You can twist the bottom or the top and you've got both hot and cold water. Alright, diesel tank, gulp pump. We're going to look at the deck wash. I guess that's coolant. Showers, shower drains, you have gulper pumps. The lovely gulper pumps. You check the water. Forward is forward, reverse is reverse. If you hit sink, it allows you just to use one, control both engines. This is the one you need to close yep. to open and close the black water tank. Yep. Three big basketball batteries. Oh, okay, this manual build pump here. Yeah. According to Jay, this was the last one before they stopped making it. You can't buy it anymore. Really? Yeah, they've, they've moved to Bosch. I've never used one of these before, so this I do okay, need. So we're going to go and do it. Yep. Right? We'll go out when we go out sailing, we'll, we'll run it. Yep. We're taking Rubberies 2 out of the marina and we're going to continue the handover by actually doing the sailing part of the handover. Very excited. We have Phil on board again doing the handover part and we also have Mark from Doyle Sales who has kindly flown in and he's going to be um, of huge help. What are you doing, babe? Getting some mounts up for the camera. Nice. It's a hot morning once again. There's a bit of a breeze outside. I reckon we're gust, well, probably about 15 to 20 knots, I would say. I'm very excited. Can't wait to actually go sailing on this thing. I mean, Nick's already been on hull one. He went sailing on uh, Supernatural on hull one, went all the way to the Chang and back. Some really tough conditions um, in amongst all that. Now it's my turn. Rather than putting it into a, like a, a loop, you put it into a figure of eight. Yeah. Because basically it's less likely to get tangled up and if you want to let it run, it will run straight back through to drop. Yeah. If you run it in just um, just in a circle, yeah. it will always get tangled up. When you're actually rolling this, you can feel, you know, if you're rolling it normally, normally the way most people do, you actually have to twist it every time. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're literally twisting the rope up. Yeah. Whereas you do it this so way, you're not twisting anything. Yeah. It'll be a bit of a, of a workout for a few uh, months. Take all the lines off. Let's go, Nick. All right, it is one of these guys. We're going. We're going to use the fenders. Sorry, I should have sprung off. It's a real pain, this stop. Oh. Heading out. So I think what happened there is that we're just getting blown onto the pontoon. So uh, we, as Phil said, we should have actually sprung out, but we didn't. And as a result, we just kind of got pushed around. So. Anyway, Phil handled it magnificently and uh, we'll learn from that, do something a bit different next time. Oh, bit of a breeze. And uh, in a minute we'll be putting the sails up and going for our very first sail. Very excited. So much heavy line. You've really got to be on top of your house. So we'll have the main sheet on the, uh, the manual winch. Do you want to head to win? Yeah, so we'll slow it down a little bit. Let's get a little bit more way on, a little bit more speed. This, this is not happening. Yeah. It looks quite tight over that side. Uh, let me go and pop them. Did you need me to help you do anything, Nick? I can't hear, just relay what I'm saying. You keep going, yeah? If he says stop, you shout, yeah? Yeah, the same just did the stop. 
now it goes out, and you reverse. Now, you do a vertical, now we're sailing. Wow. Yes, we're sailing. Absolutely. So we're actually sailing. Eight knots. Just basically spot on. Yeah, just go for a spin, huh? Just go for a spin, Wow, we're sailing. The engine is off. The jib and the mainsail are up. Out, up and uh, we're away. And I think we're doing about nine knots last time I saw. But Mark from Doyle is just going around, having a look at all the sails and just making some uh, little kind of tweaks. Very comfortable ride. It's, uh, I'm up here on the Dolphin Sea and it's pretty crazy out here. It's beautiful. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for. So long, two years, I've just been like, Am I gonna be able to get out on my sailing boat anytime soon? It is bliss, absolute bliss. Oh, but I need a hat. guys I've got a wrap here. So we've got the screen truck now and we're doing about nine knots speed over ground with about 16 knots of wind, apparent wind and an apparent wind angle about 70, the moment 75 degrees so that's great. And we've got at least another one and a half knots out of that. Maybe even two knots. We just hit 10. How nice is that? Yeah. Wow. That is a lovely, lovely looking sail. That's quite a nice sail, isn't it? It's a thing of beauty. Yes, oh, it is a thing of beauty. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay, so, well, we've uh, just gotten back from our first sail on Ruby Rose 2. Sunkissed? Yeah, sunkissed. I've had a quick little rinse to wash all the sunscreen off my face. And uh, wow, we're exhausted. We've had a big two days. Yeah, yesterday we had our technical handover. Today we took Ruby Rose 2 out for the first time. We a burn. were a bit of a burn. We got the screecher out. We've had Mark on board and Phil on board. And uh, tonight we're moving on board ourselves. So this will be our first night on board. So listen, yeah. that's amazing. Tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow, Therese, for the next episode and also for clearly what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, uh, Mark is coming back and we are going to go out again because we didn't uh, do the reefing lines. So we need to like mark out all the reefing lines and reef the main and do all that. And then uh, I think that Mark has talked Phil into flying the asymmetric because yeah, so Phil them. was like, mm, I think it's a bit windy, so the but Mark's like, it's fine. Yeah. So um, how are you feeling? Overwhelmed. I think overwhelmed. Yeah. It seems very surreal. We've been waiting for this moment for what, three years, four years? And yeah. when we started this whole project with Seawind in 2019, um, there's a lot to take in to try and center ourselves to kind of not think about what happening is happening tomorrow or but I'm exhausted, I am tired, I'm very, very tired. I, you know, the, just even the fact that it's so crazy hot out here, the sun is absolutely yeah. like, you know, you know pretty it's withering. Yeah, it's intense. But no, happy, content, looking forward to getting sailing. H how do you um, think she sails? How did you find her under sail? She points high, she points far higher than I thought she would. I mm. think 35 degrees is, is, you know, where we're gonna get 35 to 38, I think she'll sail out. Do you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, the, and, and honestly, these these sails are beautiful when they're set. Like it's like, all right, this is this is not that wrong. Because Phil on the um, delivery trip said he got thirty five degrees, and we're like, 
Did you really? Yeah. Did you really? Did you really feel? Really feel but no, I think we'll get 38 out of this. 30, okay. 35, I think, is maybe a little bit optimistic. Between 35 and 38 for a catamaran with the, without daggerboards, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's exactly what we want. She's so comfortable under sail as well as Yeah, it kind of, I think, as Tasha Hacker once said back in the day, um, many, many moons ago when they were doing Atlantic Crossing, it feels like cheating. It does. It does. It feels like cheating. That being said, I feel like we, we've earned our stripes because. It's been a long time coming, and uh, yeah, we've we've done the hard yards, and we this is, hard, yeah. I feel like we deserve like a little bit of luxury, um, and this feel, this boat feels incredibly luxurious compared to Ribera's too. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna go and get some ice in my drink and put on Netflix, and then take oh. my take my laundry out of the washer dryer, and also we'll put on the air conditioning. We will. And fill up our fr freezer full of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we gonna do? Take care of yourselves. Uh, we will see you all next week. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Bye.